So now we have our business entity fully established. Our personal credit profile is looking good and we are ready for funding. The first thing we need to do is understand where we can access funding. I do recommend banks and credit unions. Here's why. Banks and credit unions are excellent options for business owners to secure funding because of their established relationships, diverse funding choices, and competitive interest rates. These financial institutions provide personalized service, offering businesses advice and resources. They are trustworthy and regulated, plus they contribute to building a positive business credit history. So this is very important, building positive business credit history. With flexibility in funding solutions, they can tailor financing options to meet various business needs. Now, careful consideration of financial situation and needs will help you determine the most suitable funding source. All right, so depending on your need, you will know where to go to get funding. Now, these financial institutions are grouped into several different tiers, which is important for you to understand. The first tier, tier one, these are your national banks or worldwide banks. These are the largest and most prominent banks with a significant presence both nationally and worldwide. They are referred to as money centers or big banks. Examples include JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. These banks typically offer a wide range of financial services, including retail banking, investment banking, and asset management. These are your big banks. The second tier, tier two banks, these are your regional or community banks. Regional and community banks operate within specific geographic regions. They serve local communities and sometimes larger regions. Examples of regional banks are Regions Bank, SunTrust Banks, and these banks often focus on retail and commercial banking services. Now the third tier of financial institutions in America, these are your community banks and your credit unions. This tier includes smaller community banks and credit unions that primarily serve local communities. Community banks are typically independent and locally owned, while credit unions are member-owned financial operatives. So that's very important to note there. Credit unions are member-owned. And what does this mean? It means that members of credit unions, they are the primary shareholders in the credit union, and credit unions exist to enrich their members. So this is why credit unions often offer more favorable terms, higher limits, and so on. All right, so remember that credit unions are member-owned. Now your tier three institutions are known for personalized service and community involvement. Examples include your local savings bank, your local credit unions, and small community banks. More detailed examples, Navy Federal, PenFed, and Alliant Credit Union. So now we understand where we can get funding from. That's your banks and credit unions. We also understand the different categories or different tiers that banks and credit unions might fall into. When applying for funding, it's essential to know which credit bureau, banks, and credit unions pull information from during the assessment process. Experian and TransUnion and the information on these reports can differ. By being aware of the specific bureau a lender relies on, applicants can proactively review their credit reports, identify potential inaccuracies, and address any issues that might impact their credit score. So let's say, for example, your credit reports they're not looking so good on two of your credit reports. So let's say your Experian and your Equifax credit reports are very, very poor, but your TransUnion credit report is very good. So you do not want to walk into a financial institution that pulls your credit report from Experian or Equifax in this case, because they're gonna see that, hey, your profile doesn't look so good, and they're either gonna deny you or give you very low limits. But since your TransUnion profile looks very good, you can walk into an institution, they're only gonna take a look at your TransUnion profile and they're gonna say, hey, this person's profile looks pretty good. And then they're gonna go ahead and wanna work with you more. All right, so that's a good reason why you wanna understand where credit unions and banks do pull your credit report from, right? Now, one tool that you can use to help you to figure out where financial institutes pull your credit report from is creditboards.com. Creditboards.com is a valuable resource for individuals seeking insights into where financial entities pull credit information from. They offer a community-driven platform for credit-related discussions and advice. This knowledge will empower you to present the strongest possible credit profile, enhancing the chances of approval and securing more favorable funding terms. All right, so creditboards.com, super powerful website, do check it out. And I'm planning to do a video later on showing you step-by-step -step how to actually navigate creditboards.com, all right? Because it is a good platform, but it can be a little bit complicated. So I'll be showing you that later on as well, but do check out creditboards.com. 
You can also YouTube creditboards.com to see how other people are using the platform. But it's super important to know which credit bureaus they're going to pull from when you're going in for funding. All right. So do check that out there. Okay, so let's imagine for a second that your personal credit profile is in good order. Your business entity is correctly structured and you've taken a look at all of your credit reports and you've decided which financial institution, which bank and which credit union you actually want to go into to seek funding. Let's take a look at the importance of building trust and relationships for funding success with that bank or credit union. Building relationships with banks and credit unions before applying for personal or business funding is like laying out the groundwork for a successful financial journey. It's not just about numbers, it's about trust and understanding. When you know the people at your financial institution and they know you, there's a level of credibility that can work in your favor. Discussing your financial needs with them allows for tailored advice and insights into the best funding options available. Having a positive relationship often leads to more favorable terms and a simplified application process, which in the end makes the entire experience a lot smoother and a lot more profitable. Plus, it's not just transactional. It opens the door to specialized services, financial education, and ongoing support. It's it's like having a financial ally, someone who knows your story and is there to help you navigate the financial goals with confidence. Relationships are everything. You want to have a good relationships with persons in the bank and you want to have a good financial relationship with the bank itself. And we're going to show you how to do that in a moment. And one thing that I want you to note, once you have a good relationships with these institutions, right? And you're able to go in and get funding. You can now leverage that relationship to actually start a funding business and to refer other people over to that bank. And you can start a business that way and earn some good money on people that you're able to get funding, right? So the relationships are not just for you. It can spiral off into bigger ventures if you actually nurture those relationships, right? So start those relationships and nurture them. All right. So let's take a look at how we can actually start some relationships with lenders and how to go about it the correct way. So financial institutions such as banks and credit unions, they work in 90 day cycles. What does that mean? That means that the level of support, resources and funding they offer to you depends on the quality of relationship that you have built with them for at least 90 days. Now, in simplified terms, the longer your relationship with a financial institution is, the better that relationship is. One of the worst things that you can do is ask for funding or personal or business products the exact same day you join a financial institution. Think about it like any other relationship. Let's say you meet someone that you really like, you really admire, and you want to build a positive relationship with them. But on the first day, you're asking them for $10,000. That's not going to go anywhere, right? They're not going to see you as someone that's going to be fruitful in their life or someone that they can grow with. You're going to always seem as if you're someone who will be taken from them and not giving them anything in return. Now, whether this is in your personal life, your business life, or any aspect of life at all, this principle will carry through. You have to build mutually beneficial relationships with people, with businesses, and with entities if you're going to actually ask them for anything. So they must be able to see that, hey, I'm able to help this person. This person is able to help me. So in a nutshell, it takes at least 90 days for you to build a meaningful relationship with a financial institution because they work in 90 days cycle. You have to show them over a period of time, at least 90 days, that you will be a reliable individual and business entity for them to invest in. All right, so that's the concept behind building relationship with lenders. And let's take a look at how you can actually build this relationship within that 90 days. How to build relationship with lenders. The first thing you're going to want to do is open a personal savings and personal checkings account. You're also going to want to open a business savings and business checkings account. That's four products with an institution. Once you open these accounts, you're going to want to make a deposit into each of the accounts, a minimum of $100 in total to start. Of course, the amount of money that you put into these accounts all depends on your cash flow. The more money you put in, the more beneficial it will be in the long run. If you can only do $100, that's totally fine. Start with $100. If you can do $10,000 and spread this across all four accounts, then do $10,000. Now, once you've opened these accounts and you've made the initial deposits, you're going to want to follow it up every two to three weeks for 90 days with consistent deposits into these accounts. You're going to want to do this just to show that you have a cash flow and that you're looking to do long term business. So every two to three weeks, you're going to deposit some more money into these accounts, especially into your business checkings account. So if it's only $30 that you can do, do $30. If you can do $500 into this account every two to three weeks, do $500. All right. Just be consistent every two to three weeks. Make consistent deposits into these accounts. 
Now, let's say for example, you have a business that you want to scale and you need $100,000 to scale your business to the next level. And there are four institutions that you think you can get $25,000 in business funding from. So you want to start a relationship with these four institutions. You want to go ahead and open a personal savings and check-ins as well as a business savings and check-ins account with all of these institutions. And then you're going to want to start making some deposits into these accounts once you have made the initial deposits to open the accounts. Then you're going to follow this up every two to three weeks for 90 days and you're going to be consistent to build a relationship over time with these four institutions. All right. So that's a good example there. And once you have built those relationships, the next step is that you can actually go ahead and you can ask about their products. So on the 91st day, you can go ahead and inquire about their products or ask for credit cards or business funding. You are likely to get very high limits because of the quality of relationships you built with these institutions. Once you're approved for business funding, do remove the inquiries and then move on to the next lender because these inquiries will not show on your personal side. So basically, once you get approved for business products, business credit cards or business funding, the inquiries are not going to show up on the personal side on your personal credit report. So it is safe to actually remove those inquiries. However, if you're approved for products on the personal side, you do not want to remove those inquiries because they're going to show up on your personal side. And if you do remove those inquiries, it can result in those accounts and those products being closed. All right. So only on the business side and you have to check to ensure that it doesn't show on the personal side when it's related to business funding. Right. All right. So I have another gem for you here. As mentioned earlier on in this presentation, creditors are going to look at your credit mix. They're going to look at what kind of credit accounts you have when they're determining if they want to give you funding. So one of the things that they do like seeing on your credit report is a good installment loan. So a good installment loan to get is a pledged loan with a credit union, as this is a great way to boost up your profile and qualify you for higher limits. Examples of pledge loans are the Navy Federal pledge loans. Most credit unions have these pledge loans. So you just have to inquire about them and go ahead and get them. So how it works is basically you can take out a pledge loan for, let's say, a thousand dollars and then you're going to quickly pay off nine hundred dollars of that thousand dollars right and then you're going to make an agreement with the institution that the outstanding one hundred dollars you're going to pay this off over a period of let's say 10 months so you're going to pay ten dollars every month for 10 months and this installment loan or pledge loan is going to be reflecting on your credit profile and it's going to look really really good it's going to look healthy and it's going to be working in your favor so let's say you've had this installment loan for three months on your account that's great when you go in for funding it's going to make you look super good at six months it's going to make you look superb and by 12 months you'd have a paid off loan on your account which is going to make you look very very excellent all right so a pledge loan is a good option for an installment loan there are other installment loan options as well but definitely check out the pledge loan with your local credit union all right okay so hope that is clear hope that makes sense and in this section we've seen the importance of starting relationships with lenders and financial institutions such as banks and credit unions we've seen how to start relationships how to build relationships and how to maintain these relationships, right? I also want to say, once you do qualify for funding and you do get access to funding, the process of relationship building doesn't stop there. Keep making consistent payments because later on down the road, once you've gone ahead and you go back to them again, they're going to take a look at your relationship that you've built with them over that period of time. And they're going to say, wow. So for the last two years, this guy has been really, really working with us. Let's give him a million dollars this time. <laughs> All right. So that's really possible. So keep building those relationships, keep working on them. And I'll see you in the next section where we're going to talk about four credit unions that you can actually go into right now build these relationships and get a minimum of ten thousand dollars on a rainy saturday morning in february all right so let's take a look